So up next, I'd like to introduce uh, Srini Murthy from Herify. Uh, so Herify is a development platform, and uh, he will talk about some of the challenges in developing smart cities and infrastructure. Um, so I'll pass it off to him. Good morning. Uh, welcome to the session on uh, how Internet of Things can be used for building cities of the future and some of the challenges. Uh, but before that, let me introduce myself. I'm Sridhi Murthy. I'm the technical director at Urify. Uh, we have a company based out of USA. Uh, so before any ado, let's just get started. OK, uh, these are the items on the agenda. We have a few definitions. What is a smart city? Examples of a smart city? Internet of Things? Drivers and IoT advantages? What's in it for you? And how can Hurify help? OK, uh, typically from, from uh, times beyond, a city was defined as a large settlement. And cities have generally good system for housing, transportation, sanitation, utilities, and things like that. But if you look at from the historic point of view, city dwellers were less in number. And the large number of population was rural. Whereas if we look at the modern trend, uh, what we have is the concept of urbanization, where people are moving to the cities. And that has a profound impact on sustainability on a global scale. So come in smart cities. What is a smart city? Well, this is an example of Boston. Well, Boston is one of the smart cities of the world. Well, Wikipedia says that a smart city is a concept that integrates information and communication technology and various physical devices to help, uh, how do you say, help optimize or efficiently run a city. Well, the term smart city was, laid, was actually coined by the end of the 20th century. It's built entirely on technology and focuses on outcomes. And there are a lot of factors that have led to the emergence of smart cities. We have mega cities and overcrowding congestion, air pollution, the quality of life is reduced, transit takes time, getting from point A to point B becomes, becomes too much of an issue. So we have, or the technology gurus have come up with the concept of a smart city. So this is a simple example of a smart city ecosystem. What does a smart city consist of? It's basically a layered architecture where we have the infrastructure at the bottom. You have connectivity, accessibility, and security systems, data marketplaces and analytics, policies. And at the top, we have different services that are geared towards various consumers of the city. We have city-graded services like parking, traffic, lighting. We have corporates like light sharing, commute planning, community, which is like airports, office parks, and private citizens, they have, we have microservices which are based for profit and as well as not for non-profit. Looking at, we have the 2017 Smart Cities Index, and voila, we have Singapore at the number one spot. Well done, Singapore. So this is a list of uh, smart cities based on uh, index by, uh, by mobility, health, safety, and productivity. We have about 20 items. There's a city from India called Bhubaneswar, which is which is a good thing, because I am from India. So why, what contributes to smart city? Let's, let's look at a few examples. Now, Singapore is a smart city. What makes it a smart city? What are the different technologies that people are using within Singapore that makes it a smart city? Now, Singapore has something called as virtually Singapore or virtual Singapore. That's a 3D map of every 
every building, every road, every nook and cranny, every single plant, every single pipe that goes around in the city. And that is like a huge map that can be used by anybody. And the authorities, what they do is, let's say there's a new building coming up, they can put up the building and see how it affects traffic, vegetation, urban planning, and things like that. So Singapore is leading the way in smart city technology. We have Amsterdam. Amsterdam has won the EU Innovation Challenge for 2016 for smart cities. And it is known for being a data-driven city, wherein data takes precedence over anything else. Now, they have, they have successfully got a list of data from every government and private endpoint, and they are collating it to make a better plan for traffic, for urban planning, for transportation, for a number of other things. For example, they had a plan for traffic and uh, uh, urban mo mobility management, which was written by in, in 2006. But it has changed in 2011 because the number of, the number of cars have gone down and the number of scooters have increased and the number of cycles have increased. So they have to replan and reprioritize based on the data that is being collected by various sensors. Vienna. Vienna has an initiative called Step 2025. Now, it wants to be completely networked by 2025. Well, there are other, a lot of other initiatives in Vienna, but Step 2025 is geared towards making the city better networked. When I say better network, I'm not talking about communication networks, I'm talking about the human networks, wherein there's better mobility planning, there's better parking, there's better roads, there's better uh, public transportation, as well as open spaces, lung spaces, and things like that. OK, so this is a herd of things. This is everybody, everybody talks about Internet of Things, but nobody knows what it, what it is sometimes. And it's, it's, a, it's a hard topic, or it's a hard thing that everybody is discussing these days. Internet of Things is basically a growing network of devices that can be controlled from anywhere in the world. They have the communication technology, and they are basically sensors and actuators built into them so that they can be controlled from outside. It's basically an ecosystem that's of connected objects that are accessible to the internet. It's also called, referred to as M2M, Skynet, Internet of Everything. See, the basic idea of human, uh, the ultimate goal of IoT is to automate human life. I mean, that's probably stretching it a bit too much, but that's, that's what the experts want to do. So what are the key drivers of IoT-based smart cities? We have smart meters for energy, monitoring energy consumption. We have smart uh, technologies that are uh, pluggable to each home, which tells you what device is consuming how much power. There are a number of companies in the US and India and Singapore that are working on managing energy consumption. Traffic management, smart traffic lights, smart roads, that's one of the key driving factors. How do you utilize natural resources in, a, in an optimal way? Plugging water lakes, knowing hazardous gases where they are, what are the pollution levels, that's one of them. Public safety, public safety is one of the important things. To be honest, when, since I came to Singapore, I have not seen a single cop, a single cop at all on the streets. I mean, that's, that's, that's kudos to the city. Waste management. Waste management is another important driving factor uh, where waste bins are, are known to have sensors within them and they know when the data needs to be, when the garbage needs to be collected and where it can be processed and what type of garbage it is. So these are some of the key driving factors of IoT based smart cities. What are the applications of IoT? For a, for a home consumer, we have light bulbs, security, pet feeding, smoke alarm, a smart refrigerator, infotainment systems. For transport, we have traffic routing, telematics, smart parking, supply chain shipping, public transport, airlines. For health and body, I mean, this is one of the, one of the hard things where 
We have wearables which are able to give ready-made information about uh, the person's health and how he is doing. Uh, it can also detect whether there is any alarming changes in the body temperature, blood pressure, heart rate, and can immediately alert the authorities. Buildings and infrastructure. This is a smart building, I assume. We have a good HVAC system, security, lighting. Uh, if there is nobody in this auditorium, probably all the lights turn off. And we have energy credits that can be given. For cities as such, what are the main things? Are, uh, as we discussed before, we have electrical distribution, maintenance, signage, utility, smart grid, waste management, and things like that. OK, this is a use case where we are saying efficient waste management in smart cities. We have these garbage cans, which are, which are fitted with low-cost passive sensors, and they know when, when they are full, and they can signal using existing communication lines to know when the garbage needs to be collected. And each of these garbage cans is separately labeled to, with the type of garbage it is, so they can be handled in appropriate facilities. And the data is sent to the city council, recycling plants, and other things wherein a data can be collated and analytics can be made on that. Some of the use cases that are actually running. California has a drought management system. It can optimize water pumping. It can reduce water leakage. It can detect water leaks. We have, have a link there, uh, for, uh, and it can be made available so that more people can read about it. The New York HSS, HSS initiative, it can collect all social services uh, data in one pan, and one source of truth. There's no need for data to be reentered. It can be done through a fingerprint, and the uh, people can utilize social services. San Francisco has a shared youth database for bringing business intelligence to social workers, and it can detect uh, various youths who are uh, at risk, and they can be put into the shared youth database and appropriate actions can be taken. OK, this is an important thing. What are the challenges in smart cities? The task of building smart cities is full of gargantuan challenges. The IoT ecospace or the smart city ecospace is very fragmented. We'll have to collaborate with n number of stakeholders. It's not just one. And each one has a different technology that is worth working on. One works in Bluetooth, one works in Zigbee, somebody works on Wi-Fi. You have a whole plethora of challenges there. Cost and funding. Smart cities cost money. So we need to think of the cost and funding where it comes from as well. Where do we put device intelligence? What is the limit we put on device intelligence? Because the more intelligence there is in a device, the more expensive it is, and it comes back to cost and funding. People in politics. People, believe me, are sometimes unwilling to accept this change and moving into smart cities. This is inherently because they might be troubled. They might have to do a little bit of suffering. And we have seen this in many places where the politicians really are not supportive of having a smart city technology being integrated. I mean, this is probably true in many countries, and not just limited for developing or developed countries. We do not think of the economies of scale. When we talk about smart cities, the economy of scale is one of the important parts. Imagine you have a waste management system, and think of the amount or the number of sensors that need to be placed. So it's huge. I mean, we have to think of the economies of scale. And room for growth. What if the city grows? How do we, how do we adapt to that? How easily can these sensors be adapted? How easily can they be manufactured? Can they grow easily? That's one thing. Data and access control. This data that we are collecting from IoT sensors and smart city sensors, how do we control the data? Well, should it fall into wrong hands? What can happen? We saw in the, some Bond movie or some Mission Impossible movie where uh, the villain actually blows up an entire building using gas pipes. So that's one of the things. Adoption by citizens, as I said, it's well, again related to people and politics. They must be willing to accept the change. Expertise, one of the key important factors. Do we have the expertise to build smart cities? 
Are we doing enough to encourage this expertise? So that's, this is some of the important key challenges that we have. OK. <coughs> Everything is done. We have a smart city. But what's in it for you? What's in it for me? What's in it for the common man? As we say in Hindi, uh, as we say in Hindi the Aam Admi, or the mango people. What does a smart city give back to its consumer or its user? Well, Juniper has uh, fortunately done that study for us. Smart cities give the potential to give back three working weeks worth of time for every individual. Mobility saves 60 hours, public safety 35 hours, healthcare 9 hours, productivity saves 21 hours. These can be utilized for more time with family, getting active, taking a long vacation, perhaps to Singapore. Improved recovery. Decreased risk of dis uh, depression, improved earning potential. You can do alternative uh, careers and studies. So that, see, I would say that this is one of the key important things as to why every city in the world must adopt to be a smart city, wherein the average person gets back. How can Hurify help? Well, Hurify is a, is a company that is driven to bring in IoT uh, ecosystem based on blockchain. So we have blockchain-driven smart contracts. We can connect and collaborate seamlessly with every, any other partners. We can earn rewards, do trainings and more. We can shop for hardware and software using our HUR tokens. These are some of the few ways that we Hurify can help. There are many other ways that we can do it and can be discussed further. These are some of the things about us. We have, uh, we have a video on how Hurify is revolutioning in IoT development. We have a news at hurify.co for subscription. These are our social media links. And that's it. We are at the end of, this, uh, end of the presentation. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you.